Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and today I'd like to share a fun read aloud with you of the story, Many Moons. The story, Many Moons, was written in 1943 by James Thurber, and this version was illustrated in 1971 by Louis Slobodkin. If you're ready to hear the story of Many Moons, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Many Moons. Many Moons Once upon a time, in a kingdom by the sea, there lived a little princess named Lenore. She was ten years old, going on eleven. So here's a little kingdom by the sea with a little princess named Lenore. She was almost eleven, but one day... Lenore fell ill of a surfeit of raspberry tarts, and took to her bed. The royal physician came to see her and took her temperature and felt her pulse and made her stick out her tongue. The royal physician was worried. He sent for the king. I'm sorry, he sent for the king, Lenore's father, and the king came to see her. So it says that she got sick because of a surfeit of raspberry tarts. She might just have a tummy ache. She ate too many sweets. But the doctor was called, and the doctor seemed worried and told her father to come and see her. <clears throat> I will get you anything your heart desires, the king said. Is there anything your heart desires? Yes, said the princess. I want the moon. If I can have the moon, I will be well again. Now, the king had a great many wise men who always got him anything he wanted. So he told his daughter that he could have the, so he told his daughter that she could have the moon. Then, he went to the throne room and pulled a bell cord, three long pulls and a short pull. One, two, three. And, present, and presently, the Lord High Chamberlain came into the room. The Lord High Chamberlain was a large, fat man who wore thick glasses, which made his eyes seem twice as big as they really were. This made the Lord High Chamberlain seem twice as wise as he really was. I want you to get the moon, said the king. The Princess Lenore wants the moon? If she can have the moon, she will get well again. So the king says to his daughter, whatever you want, I'm going to get it for you. And he, she says, I want the moon and then I'll be well. So he calls for his grand uh, Lord High Chamberlain and asks for the moon. Can you give someone the moon? Like the real, real moon? I'm not sure this is going to work. The moon! exclaimed the Lord High Chamberlain, his eyes widening. This made him look four times as wise as he really was. Yes, the moon! said the king. M-O-O-N moon! Get it tonight! Tomorrow at the latest! The Lord High Chamberlain wiped his forehead with a handkerchief then blew his nose loudly. I have got a great many things for you in my time, your majesty, he said. It just happens that I have with me a list of things that I have got for you in my time. He pulled out a long scroll of parchment. He pulled a long scroll of parchment out of his pocket. <clears throat> Let me see now. He glanced at the list, frowning. <clears throat> I have got ivory, apes, and peacocks, rubies, opals, and emeralds, black orchids, pink elephants, and blue poodles, gold bugs, scarabs, and flies in amber, hummingbirds' tongues, angels' feathers, and unicorn horns, giants, midgets, and mermaids, frankincense, ambergris, and myrrh, troubadours, minstrels, and dancing women, a pound of butter, two dozen eggs, and a sack of sugar.
to the Lord Chamberlain. That's him right there. He says, it just so happens I have a list of all of the things I've gotten for you. You see this list? It's a lot. All kinds of things. And the king is like, yeah, so? So keep doing it. Give me the moon. Ah, sorry. My wife wrote that in there. The two dozen, the pound of butter, two dozen eggs, and the sack of sugar are not things that he got. It's things that his wife wants him to get. Well, I don't remember any blue poodles, said the king. It says blue poodles right here on the list, and they are checked off with a little check mark, said the Lord High Chamberlain. So there must have been blue poodles. You just forgot. Never mind the blue poodles, said the king. What I want now is the moon. I have sent as far as Samarkand and Araby and Zanzibar to get things for you, your majesty, said the Lord High Chamberlain. But the moon is out of the question. It is 35,000 miles away and it is bigger than the room the princess lies in. Furthermore, it is made of molten copper. I cannot get the moon for you. Blue poodles, yes. The moon, no. The king flew into a rage and told the Lord High Chamberlain to leave the room and to send the royal wizard to the throne room. The royal wizard was a little thin man with a long face. He wore a high red peaked hat covered with silver stars and a long blue robe covered with golden owls. His face grew very pale when the king told him that he wanted the moon for his little daughter and that he expected the royal wizard to get it. So here we have the blue poodles that the king doesn't remember getting. And we still have our sick little princess. But the king has freaked out. He sent the Lord Chamberlain away and he says, and while you're when you on the way out the door, send the royal wizard in here. You can't help me, Lord Chamberlain. Maybe the wizard can do your job. Plus, the Lord Chamberlain says the moon is really far away. It's really big. And it's made out of mol molten copper. It won't work. That's what made the king extra mad. Let's see if the wizard can help. No, no, I see the wizard has a list too. <clears throat> oh, I have worked a great deal of magic for you in my time, your majesty, said the royal wizard. As a matter of fact, I just happen to have in my pocket a list of wizardries I have performed for you. He drew a paper from deep, from a deep pocket in his robe. It begins. Dear Royal Wizard, I am returning here with the so-called Philosopher's Stone, which you claimed. No, that isn't it. The Royal Wizard brought a long scroll of parchment from another pocket of his robe. So he just read a note that wasn't to the, from the king, a list of his things. It was something else. <clears throat> now, let's, here it is, he said. Now let us see. I have squeezed blood out of turnips for you, and turnips out of blood. I have produced rabbits out of silk hats and silk hats out of rabbits. I have conjured up flowers, tambourines, and doves out of nowhere, and nowhere out of flowers, tambourines, and doves. I have brought you divining rods, magic wands, and crystal spheres in which to behold the future. I have compounded filters, unguents, and potions to cure heartbreak, surfeit, and ringing in the ears. I have made you my own special mixture of wolfbane, nightshade, and eagle's tears to ward off witches, demons, and things that go bump in the night. I have given you seven league boots, the golden touch, and a cloak of invisibility. So the Grand Wizard is saying, I have given you a lot of things. I've done lots of wizardry. I've made things come out of nowhere. I've given you, I've given you gifts that should help you be invisible. 
Um, I've made things appear where they weren't and made them disappear when they were. And the king does not look happy. He's listening, but he doesn't look happy. No, no, it didn't work, said the king. The cloak of invisibility did not work. Yes, it did, said the royal wizard. No, it didn't, said the king. I kept bumping into things the same as ever. The cloak is supposed to make you invisible, said the royal wizard. It's not supposed to keep you from bumping into things. All I know is I kept bumping into things, said the king. The royal wizard looked at his list again. I got you, he said. Horns from Elfland, sand from the Sandman, gold from the rainbow. Also, a spool of thread, a paper of needles, and a lump of beeswax. Ugh. Sorry, those are things my wife wrote down for me to get for her. What I want you to do now, said the king, is to get me the moon. The princess Lenore wants the moon, and when she gets it, she will be well again. Nobody can get the moon, said the royal wizard. It is 150,000 miles away, and it is made of green cheese, and it is twice as big as the palace. The king flew into another rage and sent the royal wizard back to his cave. Then he rang a gong and summoned the royal mathematician. The royal mathematician was a bald-headed, nearsighted man with a skull cap on his head and a pencil behind each ear. He wore a black suit. Hang on. So here's uh, all the little princesses. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the king still bumping into stuff with his invisibility cloak. This is the castle. And all he wants, the king just wants the moon. That's it. And now here comes the royal mathematician. He's bald-headed, nearsighted. He has a skull cap, two pencils, one behind each ear. He wore a black suit with white numbers on it. I don't want to hear a long list of all the things you have figured out for me since 1907, said the king to him. I want you to figure out right now how to get the moon for the princess Lenore. When she gets the moon, she will be well again. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned all the things that I have figured out for you since 1907, said the royal mathematician. It so happens that I have a list with me. He pulled out, he pulled a long scroll of parchment out of his pocket and looked at it. Now, let me see. I have figured out for you the distance between the horns of a dilemma night and day, and A to Z. I have computed how far is up, how long it takes to get away, and what becomes of gone. I have discovered the length of the sea serpent, the price of the priceless, and the square of the hippopotamus. I know where you, I know where you are when you are at sixes and sevens, how much is you have to walk to make an arc, and how many birds you can catch with the salt in the ocean. 187,796,132, if it would interest you to know. The mathematician also has a list of all the things he's calculated for the king. And the king is telling him, I don't want to hear any of that. I just want you to tell me how to get the moon. He says, there aren't that many birds. I didn't say there were, said the royal mathematician. I said, if there were. I don't want to hear about 700 million imaginary birds, said the king. 
I want you to get the moon for Princess Lenore. The moon is 300,000 miles away, said the math royal mathematician. It is round and flat like a coin, only it is made of asbestos. And it is half the size of this kingdom. Furthermore, it is pasted on the sky. Nobody can get the moon. The king flew into a still another rage and sent the royal mathematician away. Then he rang for the court jester. The jester came bounding in the throne room in his motley and his cap and bells and sat at the foot of the throne. Oh, what can I do for you, your majesty? said the court jester. So the mathematician has made the king mad as well. He says the moon is bigger than your kingdom. It's made of asbestos and it's very, very, very far away. And so he calls for the court jester. Everyone's made him mad. Maybe the court jester will make him happy. Nobody can do anything for me, said the king mournfully. The princess Lenore wants the moon, and she cannot be well till she gets it. But nobody can get it for her. Every time I ask anybody for the moon, it gets larger and farther away. There is nothing you can do for me except play on your lute. Something sad. Um, uh, hey, uh, how big do they say the moon is? Asked the court jester. And, um, how far away? The Lord High Chamberlain says it's 35,000 miles away and it's bigger than the Princess Lenore's room, said the king. The royal wizard said it's 150. 50,000 miles away and twice as big as this palace. The royal mathematician says it's 300,000 miles away and half the size of this kingdom. The court jester strummed on his lute for a little while. They are all wise men, he said, and so they must be, they must all be right. And if they're all right, then the moon must be just as large and as far away as each person thinks it is. The thing to do is to find out how big the Princess Lenore thinks it is and how far away. I never thought of that, said the king. So the jester listens to the king and the king is frustrated. Everyone's telling him something different. And the court jester is going to play him a song. He says, really, you should just ask Lenore. How far does she think it, how far away does she think it is? And how big does she think it is? And the king, he says, wow, I was really bummed out, but I never thought about that. Ah, I'll go ask her, your majesty, said court jester. And he crept softly into the little girl's room. The Princess Lenore was awake, and she was glad to see the court jester, but her face was very pale, and her voice very weak. Have you brought me? Have you brought the moon to me? She asked. Well, Lenore is still not feeling very good, but she's awake, and when the court jester comes in, she says, oh you bring me the moon? Not yet, said the court jester, but I will get it for you right away. How big do you think it is? Oh, it's just a little smaller than my thumbnail, she said, for when I hold my thumbnail up at the moon, it just covers it. And how far away do you think it is, asked the court jester. Well, it's not as high as the big tree outside my window, said the princess, for sometimes it gets caught in the top branches. It'll be very easy to get the moon for you, said the court jester. 
I will climb the tree tonight when it gets caught in the top branches and bring it to you. Then he thought of something else. What is the moon made of, princess? He asked. Oh, she said. It's made of gold, of course, silly. So we have Princess Lenore. She's holding her thumb up, and when she holds her thumb up, it covers the moon, so she doesn't think it's very big. Just the size of her, her thumbnail. And it's not very far, because sometimes it gets caught in the branches of her tree. Easy. It's small and close. Just no problem. I got this by morning. By morning, I can do this. Oh, but what is it made out of? Gold. Of course. <clears throat> the court jester left Princess Lenore's room and went to see the royal goldsmith. He had the royal goldsmith make a tiny, round, golden moon, just a little smaller than the thumbnail of Princess Lenore. Then he had him string it on a golden chain so the princess could wear it around her neck. What is this thing I have made? Asked the, gold, asked the royal goldsmith when he had finished it. You have made the moon, said the court jester. That is the moon. So the court jester goes and asks the royal goldsmith for some help. And the goldsmith asks no questions. He just makes something that's little and golden and he puts it on a chain. And then he says, what is this? Uh, it's the moon. Uh, but the moon, said the royal goldsmith, is 500,000 miles away. And it's made of bronze and it's round like a marble. Oof, that's what you think, said the court jester as he went away with the moon. The court jester took the moon to Princess Lenore and she was overjoyed. The next day, she was well again and could get up and go out in the garden to play. So, Lenore was made better by the moon, but when the, the goldsmith asked about it, he said, it's even further away, and it is made out of um, bronze, and it's round like a marble. It's not flat. It's not small like a thumbnail more like this. But the moon worked for Princess Lenore and she's feeling much better. But the king's worries were not over yet. He knew that the moon would shine in the sky again that night and he did not want the Princess Lenore, to, he did not want Princess Lenore to see it. If she did, she would know that the moon she wore on a chain around her neck was not the real moon. So the king sent for the Lord High Chamberlain and said, We must keep the Princess Lenore from seeing the moon when it shines in the sky tonight. Think of something. The Lord High Chamberlain tapped his forehead with his fingers thoughtfully and said, I know just the thing. We can make some dark glasses for the Princess Lenore. We can make them so dark that she will not be able to see anything at all through them. Then she will not be able to see the moon when it shines in the sky. This made the, the king very angry. He shook his head from side to side. If she wore dark glasses, she'd bump into things, he said, and then she would be ill again. So he sent the Lord High Chamberlain away and called the royal wizard. So now that Lenore has the moon on a gold chain around her neck, there's a new problem. The moon's still out there, and if she sees it, she might get sick again. So he asks what to do, and the Lord Chamberlain says, Oh, just make some glasses. So dark she can't see. It'll be fine. But the king says, She'll bump into things, and then she'll get sick again. Boo. Bad idea. And calls for the wizard. We must hide the moon, said the king, so that the princess Lenore will not see it when it shines in the night in the sky tonight. How are we going to do that? The royal wizard stood on his hands, then he stood on his head, 
Then he stood on his feet again. I know what we can do, he said. We can stretch some black velvet curtains on poles. The curtains will cover all the palace gardens like a circus tent. And the princess will, Princess Lenore will not be able to see through them. So she will not see the moon in the sky. The king was so angry at this that he waved his arms around. Black velvet curtains would keep the air out, he said. The princess Lenore would not be able to breathe and she would be ill again. So he sent for the he sent the wiz royal wizard away and summoned the royal mathematician. So the wizard's thinking about this plan. He says, put a tent over the whole garden and then it will be fine. And the king gets mad because then she won't be able to breathe fresh air. If she doesn't have fresh air, she's going to get sick. And he already had to give her the moon when she got sick the first time. So what is she going to ask for the second time? Get the royal mathematician out here. We must do something, said the king, so that Princess Lenore will not see the moon when it shines in the night in the sky tonight. If you know so much, figure out a way to do that. The royal mathematician walked around in a circle. Then he walked around in a square. Then he stood still. I have it, he said. We can set off fireworks in the gardens every night. We will make lots of silver fountains and golden cascades. And when they go off, they will fill the sky with so many sparks that it will be as light as day and the Princess Lenore will not be able to see the moon. The king flew into such a rage that he began jumping up and down. Fireworks would keep the Princess Lenore awake, he said. She would not get any sleep at all, and she would be ill again. So the king sent the royal mathematician away. So he walked in a circle. He walked in a square, and his idea was fireworks. So many fireworks. So many fireworks that you don't notice that there's no moon in the sky. And it makes the king mad because then it will be light and she won't sleep. And if she doesn't sleep, then she's going to get sick. Goodbye, mathematician. When he looked up again, it was dark outside. And he saw the bright rim of the moon just peeping over the horizon. He jumped up in a great fright and rang for the court jester. The court jester came bounding into the room and sat down at the foot of the throne. Oh, uh, yeah, what can I do for you, your majesty? He asked. Nobody can do anything for me, said the king mournfully. The moon is coming up again. It will shine into Princess Lenore's bedroom, and she will know it is still in the sky, and that she does not wear it on a golden chain around her neck. Play me something on your lute, something very sad. For when the princess sees the moon, she will be ill again. The court jester strummed on his lute. Uh, what do your wise men say, he asked. They can think of no way to hide the moon that will not make Princess Lenore ill, said the king. The court jester played another song very softly. Uh, your wise men know everything, he said, and if they cannot hide the moon, then it cannot be hidden. The king put his head in his hands again and sighed. <sighs> so there's a problem. Lenore has the moon, but now we can't let her see the moon. And none of the wise guys know what to do. And the jester is talking to the king about it, playing with some soft music, trying to soothe him a little. Suddenly, he jumped up from his throne, pointed to the windows. Look, he cried, the moon is already shining in Princess Lenore's bedroom. Who can explain how the moon can be shining in the sky when it's hanging on a golden chain around her neck? The court jester stopped playing on his lute. 
Who could explain how to get the moon when your wise men said it was too large and too far away? It was Princess Lenore. Therefore, the Princess Lenore is wiser than your wise men and knows more about the moon than they do. So I will ask her. The king is freaking out. The moon's already coming up. It's all going to be ruined. Princess Lenore is going to freak out. And the jester says, none of your wise men could solve this problem, but Lenore did. So maybe we maybe Lenore is the wisest person in all the kingdom. We should ask her. And before the king could stop him, the court jester slipped quietly out of the throne room and up the wide marble staircase to the princess Lenore's bedroom. So he's not even giving the, the king a chance to figure this out. He's like, I'm, I got you, king. I'm going to solve this. And he's going up to the princess's room. The princess was lying in bed, and she was wide awake, and she was looking out the window at the moon shining in the sky, shining in her hand, was the moon the court jester had got for her. He looked very sad, and there seemed to be tears in his eyes. Ah, uh, tell me, Princess Lenore, he said mournfully, how can the moon be shining in the sky when it's hanging on a gold chain around your neck? So, the jester didn't get there in time. Lenore is looking at the moon, and he's getting, he's like, oh, I'm going to freak out. I'm crying. And he asks Lenore, how is it in the sky and on your neck? The princess looked at him and laughed. That's easy, silly, she said. When I lose a, a tooth, a new one grows in its place. Face, doesn't it? Of course, said the court jester. And when a unicorn loses its horn in the forest, the new one grows in the middle of its forehead. That's right, said the princess. And when the royal gardener cuts the flowers in the garden, other flowers come to take their place. <clears throat> oh, I should have thought of that, said the court jester, for it is the same way with the daylight. And it is the same way with the moon, said Princess Lenore. I guess it is the same way with everything. Her voice became very low and faded away. And the court jester saw that she was asleep. Gently, he tucked the covers in around the sleeping princess. So the princess is the wisest. She explains that when she loses a tooth, a new one grows. When a unicorn loses a horn, a new one comes back in its place. When the gardener cuts the flowers, new ones grow. And the jester is pretty impressed by all this. But before he can say anything else, she falls asleep and he tucks her in. But before he left the room, he went over to the window and winked at the moon. For it seemed to the court jester that the, wound, that the moon had winked at him. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the story, Many Moons. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, Please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page and don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye!